Hi everyone. Meet Maya, a 15-year-old with a passion for spicy food. It was a love affair that brought her both joy and occasional betrayal. The culprit? Recurrent aphthous dermatitis or RAS for short. These are canker sores that take up residence in her mouth every few months. Thankfully, her mother who also suffered from RAS calmly reassured her each time they appeared. This video dives deep into the most common ulcerative disease of the oral cavity, recurrent aphthous dermatitis. This is a disorder that causes recurring ulcers to form on the oral mucosa in people with no underlying systemic diseases and are otherwise healthy. Recent studies show several factors associated with RAS outbreaks, which include heredity, which in Maya's case stands true as having a family member with RAS increases the chances of developing it. The other factors are stress, food allergies, upper respiratory infections, hormonal changes, nutritional deficiencies, and immune system function. Moving on to the clinical findings of RAS. The first episode of RAS typically occurs during the second decade of life. The initial sign is often a burning sensation or a feeling of a small bump on the oral mucosa, one to two days before an ulcer appears. This aligns with Maya's experience at age 10, when a burning tongue preceded the ulcer. Usually, a localized erythema develops first. Within a few hours, a small white papule forms. This papule then ulcerates and gradually enlarges over the next 48 to 72 hours. Recurrent aphthous stomatitis ulcers can be classified into three subtypes based on their clinical characteristics, minor, major, and herpetiform. The minor aphthous ulcers are the most common type, affecting around 80% of RAS patients. They're typically small, ranging from 0.3 to 1 cm in diameter. They appear in groups of 1 to 6 and recur every 1 to 4 months. The ulcers have an erythematous halo and a grayish-white coating called pseudomembrane. They heal completely within 10 to 14 days and leave no scars. Minor aphthous ulcers develop mainly on the non-keratinized mucosa, particularly on the buccal mucosa, labial mucosa, and the floor of the mouth. Moving on to major aphthous ulcers. These are less common than minor ulcers, affecting about 10% of RAS patients. Major aphthous ulcers are a more severe form of the disease. These ulcers are larger and deeper than minor ulcers, typically exceeding 10 mm in diameter. Major aphthous ulcers can last between 5 to 10 weeks and often leave scars when they heal. Unlike minor ulcers, they can appear anywhere in the mouth, including the throat and oropharynx. The third category, the herpetiform ulcers, is the least common type of RAS, affecting only 1 to 10% of patients. These ulcers are small, around 2 to 3 millimeters, numerous, and very painful. Unlike minor aphthous ulcers, herpetiform ulcers can erupt on both the non keratinized mucosa and keratinized mucosa. They typically appear on the tongue and the floor of the mouth. In some cases, these small ulcers may merge into a single, larger, irregular ulcer. Herpetiform ulcers heal within one to two weeks, but often leave scars. While Maya's mother suspected recurrent aphthous dermatitis, the dentist wisely performed a thorough examination to rule out other possibilities with similar symptoms. These include Bichette syndrome, Magic syndrome, cyclic neutropenia, PFAPA syndrome, erythema multiforme, and pemphigus. The first one, Bichette syndrome, also causes recurrent ulcers, but they also appear on the genitals and cause ocular disease, unlike RAS. The next one is magic syndrome. These patients experience a sudden onset of fever, elevated white blood cell count, and skin lesions. Additionally, Half of these patients have an associated malignancy. Moving on to cyclic neutropenia. This condition manifests with fever, skin abscesses, lymphadenopathy, and respiratory infections. Beyond mouth ulcers, other oral complications like severe gingivitis, 
and aggressive periodontitis might be present. PFAPA syndrome was also a disorder that was ruled out, primarily affecting young children. PFAPA syndrome involves recurring episodes of fever, pharyngitis, and cervical adenitis, along with recurring oral ulcers. Next on the list was erythema multiforme. This ulcerative condition can be preceded by symptoms like fever, malaise, headache, sore throat, rhinorrhea, and cough. Pop quiz. The last on the dentist list was pemphigus. Unlike RAS ulcers, which heal in a couple of weeks and recur, pemphigus lesions progressively enlarge over weeks or months. Additionally, RAS ulcers are typically round and symmetrical, while pemphigus lesions are not. By carefully examining for these possibilities, the dentist could confidently diagnose Meyer's condition. Luckily, Meyer's case involved minor aphthous ulcers, which typically require minimal intervention. To manage the pain and promote healing, topical ointments, combining an anesthetic like benzocaine or lidocaine with a protective base like Orabase are often used. For more severe cases, topical steroid creams containing fluosinonide, betamethasone or clobetazole can be applied directly to the ulcers after meals and bedtime two to three times a day. These applications often come with an adhesive base to ensure better adherence. Major aphthous ulcers require a more targeted approach. In these cases, a gauze sponge containing the topical steroid is placed directly on the ulcer and left in place for 15 to 30 minutes. This extended contact time allows the medication to work more effectively. In severe cases of major aphthous ulcers, systemic steroids are considered. Here is a table summarizing medications commonly used to treat RAS. Feel free to take a screenshot. While RAS can be a frustrating and sometimes painful condition, understanding the various presentations makes a dental professional equipped to manage it. By effectively diagnosing and treating RAS, a patient's quality of life significantly improves. Remember, a dentist's role goes beyond simply treating the ulcers. It's about offering reassurance and education. Before we wrap up this video, here are some key points to be used to educate patients suffering from RAS. Feel free to take a screenshot. We have now come to the end of this video. Hope you had fun learning with us. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.